Hello, hello everybody, it's Boy Prostrof, and we're back again with a new video. This is a video that YouTube suggested to me. I don't know why, I've never used drugs, besides a little Wii U ass, okay? This is the craziest drugs you've never heard of. Let's check him out. Pro drugs never heard that of you have never heard of. Mm -hmm. What we got, what we got, what we got? At this point in YouTube history, I think everybody has watched at least one video about crazy or obscure drugs. And while oh, these videos technically, yeah, this is my first video of crazy or obscure drugs. Usually, if you've seen one, drugs. you've seen them all, and mm. typically the entries are rather surface level. That's Fortunately, how it kind of works with this. Different. We're gonna cover drugs that are so random and so unknown by the general public that even super niche internet communities super don't niche. know about them. Oh yeah, and this list gets crazier as it goes on. Let's begin. Okay. Salvadoran B methoxymethyl Sa ether. If you oh thought of god, this reminds me of chemistry class. I hated chemistry class. Yeah, when you heard Salvinorin in the jumbled mess of scientific smart people speak, then you would be smart correct. Smart people But this speak. isn't just regular salvia. This video is but about drugs you've never weed? heard of. And this stuff is Not way weed. crazier I don't know what the hell salvia regular is. salvia. In fact, I think a good name salvia. for this would be super salvia. But super. in case you're unfamiliar with regular salvia, let me recap quickly. Thank you. You see, with regular salvia, <laughs> in every trip report that I've seen, using salvia is almost a guaranteed misery. Miserable time. And even oh, at shit. that, the bar is so low. Why do people use it then? Why, why, if if everybody knows it's bad to use an awful trip, why use? Oh, for Salvia, that even a good experience is pretty much just not being as traumatized as the majority of people that take it. But Salvinor <laughs> the good is not that bad. Salvia. This drug is Salvia's crackhead cousin. Honestly, for all intents and purposes, this drug is probably one of the most cursed compounds ever made for a variety of reasons. For starters, <laughs> the National witch? Library of Medicine states that this chemical is among the most potent and selective kappa opioids known. And in this case, stronger is Kappa is in Twitch chat. Kappa is not always. What the hell is a Kappa? To this day, there has only ever been one reliable Salvadoran B in triple science, board. and that's simply because even some of the most seasoned psychonauts don't want to touch it. Like because it's a compound with a ridiculously long half life. According to sources, Salvadoran B is five times more potent than Salvadoran A and lasts for a duration of two to three hours. Which brings Wait, that doesn't sound that long? Two, three hours? Using this drug into the realm of sheer insanity. If you were crazy enough to want to try this drug, you would need to heavily mentally prepare yourself beforehand. Because <laughs> I mean, breakthrough drugs like- If you're a drug addict, you probably don't have any mental preparation for anything to do in life. Salvia so. and DMT are not because know, brother. time dilation. Which means that your huh? trip could feel longer than it actually is in real life. Time dilation Aka. is one of those things that's- Wait, wait, just... it's like a training arc in an anime online yet nobody like, really knows how not really or why it happens in Just a post bad. i found on the dmt forum a user states i felt like i lived an entirely different life in the dmt <laughs> world it felt like 10 years or so i even had a family and if that's okay. not crazy enough that is not his family his family probably ugly as hell they have like three teeth in between them Another come on let's be honest on this post saying this happened to me on salvia and i had absolutely no awareness of this life i lived a whole lifetime in another life and then zap i'm in my bedroom it was unsettling <laughs> to me and another user discussing his trip wrote what feels like an eternity only lasted 15 minutes Damn. keep in mind this is just regular salvia oh this is not the bad shit. five to 20 minutes considering uh -huh. salvinorin b is five times more potent and I lasts the whole life i had a family longer, it's no wonder why so few <laughs> even dare to try it so what happened to the person <laughs> That's that bad did trip, take this compound oh, well shit. for that we actually need to look at the research paper yeah a research paper the doctors here had the psychonaut in the study measure his dose in micrograms which is extremely micrograms. tiny an average dose of regular Bam. salvia is measured in milligrams which is obviously much more the psychonaut in the study which is basically just a fancy name for someone who likes psychedelics said the following about his experience with self <laughs> what you can be in a study hey good drug addict let's go we'll give you all the drugs we we'll study what happens to your body you dare Oh, science, team. baby. My head was observed to retract, and my face huh? was frozen in a frighteningly blank expression, as if I were having a stroke. Wait, my hands adopted retracted? a strange pose and waved around very slowly, alternately creepily became a gang member. and graceful. I remembered none of this. Then, when talking about actually breaking through on the chemical, which basically means losing track of your current reality and entering hyperspace, they hyperspace. wrote, I wasn't actually perceiving any objects in my environment. It was my mind that I was perceiving as a manifestation of the movement of a five dimensional object through a four dimensional membrane uh, what the fuck does that shit even mean bro 
Whatever that means. Considering this was such a minuscule <laughs> dose, I can't imagine the trip report someone might come back with if they took a full send level dose. Luckily for you guys, there is actually one other trip report oh. on the entire internet. Although it isn't reliable as an actual research paper. Like this everything trip else report on the is internet. simply titled, I cannot comprehend what happened. And it's actually written by a career chemist who synthesized the compound himself. And upon taking it, was transported into an entirely different life in the 1950s. In this the 1950s. On the experience. I fell through my floor into an endless array of eerie sounds. I eventually reached the bottom and felt my body hit the ground. A creature walked towards me and grabbed me by the neck and said, in a disturbing voice. Then he threw me up and I landed. I stood uh -huh. up and realized that I was in the 1950s. The trip went from impossible events to me simply existing in a different time. I walked around on this street and found a newspaper on the ground. I could <laughs> read each and every style. article oh. and on the top it read August 6th, 1953. I didn't oh. know that it wasn't real. It was all I knew. I could remember my life, but it wasn't me. It was the life of a person that I was in 1953. I could remember my childhood, school years, first job, everything. As potentially God, cool damn. as it may seem to almost yeah, that, time travel, listen, this one be honest with you, that don't sound that bad though part of this one story doesn't make this compound seem any less terrifying. 4CMA. Like many of the obscure huh. chemicals on this list, Weird. finding oh, information okay. on... Okay, so the reason it doesn't seem that bad, he didn't give us any of the bad shit. Like, what are the side effects, brother? Do you still have hands? How many teeth you got in your mouth? Nose? Does it exist? I don't know. 4CMA is not. not easy. That's because 4CMA is a research chemical. If you don't know mm -hmm. what research chemicals are, they're basically synthetic chemicals that were Frankenstein in a lab as part of a research project in an attempt to either improve on an existing chemical or to create an entirely new drug. Basically, okay. research chemicals are the result of scientists crafting random stuff like they're brewing potions in Minecraft. The thing <laughs> is, most of these chemicals don't make the cut, typically because they either have terrible side effects or they aren't useful medically, or they just Makes lost sense. funding on the research. If the established drugs that most people know about are the tip of the iceberg, then research chemicals pretty much cover the rest of the iceberg all the way to the bottom. 4CMA is a I've research chemical that was originally other synthesized in videos. the 1960s, as 1960s. it was supposed to be a stimulant not the best of years. That behaved similarly to an amphetamine. Despite what scientists oh. expected, however, 4CMA had a much more antidepressant effect than stimulant effect in test subjects. But because it was mildly pleasant to use, drug dealers mildly actually pressed pleasant. this into their own pills to evade authorities. According to sources, 4CMA was first identified at the Tomorrowland Festival in 2015, where a tablet was found in the possession of a drug dealer. Then it seemed to have disappeared while a study conducted in 2019 reported detection of 4CMA in pills once again. Now, you might be curious, why is the slightly pleasant antidepressant on this list? Yeah, what well, happens? it turns out that this drug is highly neurotoxic to its users. Ooh. In studies done with rats, it was found to permanently reduce serotonin. And in further studies wait, wait. done on it... Wait, permanently reduce your happiness. That don't sound good, brother. It was also found that, quote, administration of How's force permanently a prolonged reduction in the levels of serotonin in the brain one month after injecting a single dose of Damn. the drug. In other words, it physically kills your serotonin receptors permanently. Now, to make things worse, there are still vendors that are knowingly selling this toxic chemical with no regard for the general public. This is bad because Damn. these drugs can easily end up in a wide variety of recreational oh, press. Listen, pills. just because it does that in rats don't mean it's going to do the same thing in humans, okay? Like... Yeah, that might do something similar, but... In regards to this, mm. in the Research Chemicals subreddit, one user wrote, Nice, a substance that could fry your brain like only a lifetime of MDMA use could in one sitting. Which I feel is pretty accurate. And it's even been reported that abusing this chemical could leave you with, quote, an irreversible depression that would be like an MDMA come down every day for the rest of your life. Although MDMA. it's been speculating that reaching this state would require multiple large doses over a long period of time, if you don't want to take the chance at permanently... That sounds like every drug addict Ever, brother. <laughs> damaging your serotonin neurons, I would strongly recommend staying away from They're this. They're not the most rational people in the world. CMA super MDMA, but it's really not the case. It's honestly just the worst of both worlds. The Damn. upside of MDMA what? is completely subdued in 4CMA, and the downside of yeah. MDMA. The upside, it, it has such a big downside, but the upside is little antidepressant. Okay. Is amplified to such an extreme degree, there is absolutely no value in the trade off. Pyros. No, Pyros. Not the TF2 Pyro. Pyros is an abbreviated word for the class of drugs known as pyrolidinophenones. And oh, they're pretty God. much crack on crack. If you crack remember the bath salts 
epidemic from about a decade ago? Well, pyros are to blame. They're pretty well known in the fringe drug community as being the most Rinch addictive class community. of chemicals on earth. And when I say most addictive, I'm talking about 20 times more addictive than crack. These drugs are well, I mean, absolutely insane. I don't know how addictive crack is, so I don't know what 20 times the crack addiction don't is. don't even hold a candle to the mainstream I don't think I've seen drugs crack. for their addictiveness. For example, with commonly known drugs, most people actively decide to stop using it before their supply runs out. This mm -hmm. is definitely not the case with this stuff. Barely anyone in recorded history has started using a supply of pyros and, and just stopped halfway through Damn. Out of sheer Oi, why your mouth look like a cook, brother? In most stories on the huh? internet, people who start a stash of pyros only end their days-long bender because they became full-blown psychotic and ended up in a psych ward, or if they're lucky, started seeing shadow people early on and got scared people. enough to flush the rest of their shadow down people. The toilet. Is that this racist? Is so addictive that I'm convinced oh, no. somebody has flushed their stash down the toilet and then immediately gone sewer diving <laughs> afterwards on a quest to find his precious like Gollum and Lord of the Rings. Because of this, even the most seasoned <laughs> drug users won't take this stuff Might because the compulsion to take more is practically impossible to overcome. In hindsight, it's no wonder Damn. we had a bath salts. I can't, even, I can't even comprehend how that works. Zombie epidemic. Curious, just to clarify, I'm curious, bath salts are literally just pyros. Imagine you're trying to quit a chemical that's 50 times more addictive than crack, and every time you make a stop at the gas station for your nightly Twinkies, a scraggly old dude in the back who smells like salami is tempting you to buy it for a couple bucks. The thing about the <laughs> bath salts cheap? epidemic was that whenever authorities finally got around to outlawing the latest chemical, the drug lords that sold them would just hire some armchair chemist on the internet to look for slightly different chemicals on the dark web that kind of looked the same. Keep Damn. in mind, they wouldn't even know what the Pick side effects would be. So basically, they were pretty much just selling random research chemicals to homeless people as test subjects. Because of this, a lot of people got caught up in bath salts addiction around 2012 because they had no idea how addictive they would be. But that's not even it. The most diabolical aspect of pyros is that yes. they make you extremely horny. I'm not joking. Like a 64 Okay. Four hour edge session with no break or sleep what? until you literally pass out from exhaustion or get submitted to urgent care. They say that meth That's can a lot of hours, brother. But this stuff is like meth times five. To make matters Damn. even worse, somewhere along the way, armchair chemists on the internet somehow figured to conveniently turn this compound into vape juice, which pretty much makes this invention the world's worst jewel. So vape the next time your mom gets juice? mad at you for your vaping addiction, feel free to remind her that there's some 45-year-old dude with scraggly hair in this basement vaping super crack and jorking it for 10 days straight. The amount of goodies- And just because there is a worse addiction than the one you have, that does not make your addiction better, brother. Stop! behavior pyros cause would literally Just make stop. your average discord moderator look like a buddhist monk long story short <laughs> outside of their extremely addictive qualities these drugs are well known for turning you into a d1 gooner like legitimately the michael gooner. jordan of gooning from what i've read this drug easily makes you the biggest degenerate in the world trust me when i say pyros are one <laughs> diabolical class of drugs five meo dmt five meo wonder what that shit gonna do to me brother dmt is I'm already DMT's top of the line mysterious grandfather the generous sorcerers we talked about in the medieval video were mysterious you'll be even more <laughs> intrigued by this chemical compound. This chemical is sometimes nicknamed the God Molecule. And surprisingly, the God unlike molecule. other chemicals on this list, this substance is actually naturally occurring. But this isn't ah, found shit. in a mushroom or tree bark like normal drugs. 5-MeO-DMT is Wait, naturally occurring. tree bark drugs? Occurring in toad venom, of all things. Oh. I mean, talk about hardcore. Unlike the more forgiving and consistently spiritual trip brought on by regular DMT, whether or not 5-MeO-DMT is going spiritual. to be a global spiritual experience or an existential crisis was basically a coin flip. And that's a problem, because if you choose to inhale this stuff, it is reported that this trip could last up to two hours, which is eight times longer than regular DMT. I guess that's bad. Roughly Doesn't sound that minutes. bad. Eight hour trip. Unlike most psychedelics, a two -hour trip. people usually report I guess pleasant experiences when they use the drug with reverence and respect. 5-MeO-DMT doesn't care how respect. nicely you treat it. And that sucks because if you have a bad time, you could have a very bad time mm. for up to two hours. Additionally, Damn. in my armchair psychologist opinion, I'd wager that a bad trip on 5-MeO-DMT is at least 10 times worse than a bad trip on okay. regular DMT. How the fuck do you calculate this? You need to have some sort of number or some sort of an idea exactly what it does for you to be able to say something is 10 times as worse, brother. Point, you can't just fucking throw that shit out there. It don't make no sense, goddammit. On this website, there's a category for bad trips. For context, with regular category DMT, some titles trips. of bad trip reports include First Breakthrough, Ego Loss and Bad Trip, Accelerating ego, the Evil and Ego Death. What the hell is Ego Loss? Ego Loss? A Cautionary Tale, Unprepared Liftoff into the Worst Case Scenario, and Too Much for a First Time. Which, to be honest, pretty much sounds like they either took too much or experienced ego death, which is kind of a normie experience with psychedelics. What is now, ego death? on the other hand, here are the titles for bad trip reports on 5-MeO-DMT. 
Existential horror. Existential horror. horror. Facing psychedelic terror. Okay, there's a lot of horror and terror there. Of terror. And I ended up praying to Jesus Christ. They work? Yeah, it's not a super Did fun come way back? to spend your Sunday afternoon. Help you out? Honestly, no? as a word of caution, yeah. if you're prone to existential anxiety, I would shy away from reading any bad trip reports altogether. Now, it seems like a common theme in these reports oh. that people actually... As a whole, you probably shouldn't use drugs that you don't know like the back of your hand. I mean, in fact, you probably shouldn't use drugs think that they're to be honest. To die or actually but... dying while on the drug. Now, <laughs> well, I, I don't know tell you what to do with your life, huh? that makes me believe if I'm actually dead and now my only friends are Casper the Ghost, the Grim Reaper, and Harambe totally sounds like hey. a blast. Not one reason. What? Those three sound like an absolute the best amigos. What do you mean? Death themes it's Casper. Might be that He's a legend. And Harambe? Is one of the only psychedelics that has the actual capability to kill you. You see, usually psychedelics can't kill you unless you oh. do something really dumb under the influence. 5-MeO-DMT is me. different though. Because unlike most psychedelics, most this drug just has be dumb. caused death in at least two cases. With Damn. the three major causes being, quote, Suffocation after vomiting, lung shutting down, and cardiac arrest. One Ooh. interesting trip report I found about 5-MeO-DMT wrote, I cannot emphasize enough how insanely weird, alien, and utterly cosmic this felt. Like I'd broken some type of rule and I'd entered an entirely different universe of some type. If you ask me, 5-MeO-DMT is not- <laughs> That don't- Fuck his ass up, brother. At all. Before we get into the last entry on this list, I want to make two quick notes. Oh my God. One, this video was actually a top 10, not top 5. But because of time <sighs> reasons, we cut it in half. With that okay. being said, the second part to this video is even crazier than this first part you're currently watching. <laughs> Due to the nature of this video, it's rather risky for me to post videos like uh, this. So unless you enough. guys really want part 2, I likely won't post it. Maybe if this video gets the first half. Duster. I know what you might be Duster. Thinking. What on earth do you mean by Duster? The nickname your I mean, elementary school I don't know what you mean by any of the shit you say in this video, okay? They gave you in fourth grade. I want to use weed and that shit did not make me experience and anything like this. band from San Jose, California that was formed in 1996? Okay. Hey, I was born was then. No, I mean Air Duster. Let's go. Air Duster is the one drug Air that Duster. I can't state this clearly enough. You never want to use. And the reason is way more insidious than you may think. Duster kills your brain cells. By the way, Air Air duster is not just huh. compressed air in a can. The reason air duster is actually considered a drug is because it's mostly a refrigerant, not air. And because uh. this gas is heavier than air, when most people are using it, their voice becomes very deep. <laughs> Really and sounds Damn. like a monster. Basically, when you inhale, the chemical replaces all of the oxygen in your lungs and removes carbon dioxide in the same way that regular air does. All the while, your body is getting tricked into thinking that it's inhaling oxygen because there's no carbon dioxide building up. This causes the user to get hypoxic, which is basically another word for painless brain suffocation. Essentially, Oof. duster makes you suffocate without your brain sending you into fight or flight mode, which often causes euphoria as a byproduct. This might sound cool or fun until you realize that every ha. time you get... Ha. What you universe does that sound cool or fun or cool and fun and not not mine At brother I, you're giving yourself what? insane amounts of brain damage this is because your brain can only bear around two to five minutes of hypoxia before your brain cells die permanently Oof. to make things even worse usually duster abusers will use this stuff for hours and to be honest if you're abusing a drug called duster you probably should be saving every single one of those four remaining brain cells brother like you don't got a lot save them on end or until they pass out. So instead of just minutes of killing their brain cells, they're doing it for hours a day. According to numerous anecdotal Damn. sources I've seen across online, this is one of the hardest drugs in the world to quit. I know this sounds ridiculous, but this is a reoccurring theme on this list. For example, in a post titled yeah, My is. Story of Air Duster Addiction, Air one user Duster on Reddit addiction. wrote about how addictive this stuff can really be. In Bulgaria, we had a sniffing glue addiction back 10 years ago or some shit. In this post, I don't know how he bad that is. the first time he tried it. Quote, one blast and I was done for. I felt like I needed to feel this way for the rest of my life. I cannot describe the euphoria. Then, according okay, to first his story... Off, how do you even get to the first blast of, of inhaling duster, air duster? Like, a brother, I feel like something was wrong with you before this. He went to rehab, but immediately after he got out, he relapsed, writing, I got a job that I lost, but I received a paycheck for around $200, and it literally went on a ridiculous binge on Duster in my car in the Walmart parking lot. I easily huffed what? over 50 cans in a 48-hour period. I seriously couldn't stop. And yeah, that dude had no brain cells quote, left. This stuff will make a mess of you Holy and will shit. take you down faster than any hard drugs out there. This is not some kitty drug. Like I've said, I've tried kitty everything, drug. and nothing has compared to the what do we call even a kitty drug bro i swear to god the people commenting about this have been using these drugs they have no sense of reality at this point like their reality is so different to like somebody like my reality that 
squid is a kidney drug in this dude's head, Fresh brother? For it, you get from Holy. Duster. If you use Duster, even short lengths of abuse can cause permanent brain damage, serious memory problems, seizures, loss of IQ, a loss of one's ability to focus, confusion, a permanent loss of coordination, permanent slurred speech, and God death. Damn. That being said, the biggest reason to not use Duster Wait. is the fact that... <laughs> Were those reasons? There was death there, brother. <laughs> How can you get a bigger reason? Walmart, of all things, would become your new drug dealer, which might be one of the lamest ways to die of all time. On a I big mean, forum most called of these are know lame ways who die. permanently fried their brain from drugs, to nobody's surprise, Duster and inhalants in general was the most commonly mentioned drug in the replies. And that's because most drugs don't kill it's your so brain matter. Many of them will change your brain's chemistry, but in most cases, your brain can make a full recovery over a- Change your brain, brain's chemistry like forever? Hey, yo! A long enough period of time. But this is not the case with Duster. In response to this question, one person to yourself. in thread wrote, I worked at a movie theater. Had a co-worker who was above average intelligence. He got into inhaling. Okay, first off, how the fuck do you get... How do you how do you establish somebody's intelligence? Like, this is... I, when I hear people talk like this, I just want to slap the shit out of them. You cannot... First off, you what is your intelligence level? Who are you to say what somebody's intelligence level is? You ain't an IQ test. Even IQ test ain't right. Come on, brother. Cast. After three months, he was pretty much the dumbest person I ever knew. He didn't make much sense, and he thought everything was so funny. Another user wrote about their Duster experience. I was like, he enjoyed life I more than. Say that this stuff is definitely no joke. <laughs> According to the poster, they quote probably inhaled dust off three to ten times a day for Damn. two years. Then they talk about when they finally quit it. Quote, by the time I stopped, I could not understand language much. I couldn't understand the concept of family or why anything worked how it was supposed to work. Sometimes Sheesh. I read and words suddenly looked like foreign shapes to me and I can't decode them in my head. I'm lucky I'm not like that to this day. Uh, yeah, definitely don't take this drug. Yeah, if you don't do that. Your life. All in all, no, don't take this drug. Period. No, if maybe or when or Major, even the most you know any other shit like that there have not of at least one of the chemicals don't, i mentioned on the don't list. do it not, don't worry because this is just the tip of the iceberg because Holy like i mentioned shit. earlier there is another list ready to okay, go okay i got you, you brother to some... yeah if you guys are interested let me know in the comments okay I, as i said i'm pretty lost here i just i was curious i've never seen any of these videos i was curious i was like, fucking click on this shit see if any shit, i was expecting more wild stories and Laughter. I mean, there was a lot of laughter, but probably in the expense of a lot of people. But I mean, if you're this dumb enough to use this shit, like, hey, <laughs> like, come on, brother. Anyway, let me know what y'all think. I'll see y'all next time. Okay. Bye, everybody. Have a nice day. <laughs>